In this video, I'll be reviewing the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Now, I've had this controller about a week to a week and a half now, so I can finally tell you my opinions and thoughts on the controller. Also, if you would like to see an unboxing I did of the controller, there should be an eye coming up on the top right hand corner of this video. You can click on to watch that video. Or there will be a link in the description that takes you to my unboxing of the controller. But anyway, here is what the controller actually looks like. It's just your standard controller that looks like any other controller on like an Xbox or a PlayStation. It's just your standard controller. Now this controller only comes in one color, this black transparent color. And here it is right here. Now the controller will cost you $70 retail price if you can even find the controller. As of this date of the recording, now it may vary in the future if you are watching this video in the future, but right now as the date of this recording, these are very hard to find virtually anywhere. They are still really very hard to find. So if you're lucky enough to pick up the Switch Pro Controller, then you'll be a pretty lucky person. Now in terms of the features of the controller, the controller has three different features in it. First off, it has HD rumble, just like the Joy-Con, so it does feature HD rumble. Now, honestly, I have not had a chance to try out the HD rumble, because unfortunately, at this current moment, I still only own one game, and that is Zelda Breath of the Wild. And as far as I know, and as far as I've already played a lot of hours of that game, I have not experienced any HD rumble from what I'm aware of. Now, I might have noticed it, but I wasn't really paying attention, but... Honestly, from what I'm seeing, I don't see any rumble in that game, so I have not had a chance to try out the HD rumble. Also, it does have amiibo support, just like the Joy-Cons do, but instead of uh, scanning it on the right-hand side, the right analog stick like you do the Joy-Cons, you have to scan it on top where the Nintendo Switch logo is and where it says Nintendo Switch. That is where you actually scan your amiibos, so this does have amiibo support as well. It also has a gyroscope built in for games like Breath of the Wild, hint, hint, spoiler, but Breath of the Wild and other games. But yes, it does have a gyro, gyro in it so you can tilt it up and down, especially for the new Splatoon coming out, Breath of the Wild. And any game that does support gyroscope, this does have gyro in it. And then uh, another thing about the controller as well, as you can see, it does have that Xbox 360, Xbox One design where the sticks are not side by side, they're actually diagonal from each other. Now in terms of that, at least personally me, I don't mind either. I like both of them, whether they're diagonal or whether they're across from each other. Either setup really works for me. I don't really have any uh, preference when it comes to that. Now talking about battery life with this controller, this, ba uh, this controller actually has a 40 hour battery at least that's what Nintendo claims and that's what the box says 40 hours and over the week I've had this controller I've actually never had this controller fully run out of battery yet and I've been playing six seven hours a day and honestly I haven't had this controller run out of battery and considering that the joy cons have 20 hours of battery and the joy cons last really well with the 20 hour battery you can see this thing has phenomenal battery and the nice thing is Obviously, you do not have to use uh, AA batteries like the Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller. It is a battery pack. And the way you charge the controller is on the top, you have a USB Type-C port. And that will actually charge the device. And it's nice they decided to go USB Type-C because the Switch obviously uses USB Type-C. And then again, the uh, charging grip for your Joy-Cons uses USB Type-C. And phones and tablets nowadays are starting to become more mainstream and using USB Type-C. So USB Type-C is becoming so common. It's really nice that Nintendo did not go proprietary for the Switch controller. Or, uh, or all of the Switch accessories are mostly USB Type-C, which is just a phenomenal job from Nintendo. The first time they actually went the standard they didn't go proprietary and that's one thing I do love about it overall one complaint I do have about the controller just talking about one negative I can only really find one negative with the controller in my opinion the one negative I do have for the switch controller is the fact that for some reason they did not put a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on it 
You can see right here, there's no uh, headphone jack right there. That's an LED indicator to indicate what player you are from one to four, but no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And with the systems, even including the Wii U's gamepad, Xbox One, uh, PS4, they all have 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. That's kind of becoming the standard for uh, game consoles and controllers to have uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks so you can plug in your headphones and use them. It's really just a shame that you can't use the Pro Controller with headphones because if you're on the TV docked, you may want to use headphones, but unfortunately you're going to have to plug in headphones to your TV or get some kind of adapters and it's just not the best experience. So I'm hoping if they do make a new controller down the road, they do add a, a, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack to either the Joy-Cons or to the uh, Pro Controller, but that's just me. Of course, it will vary from person to person depending on how much you need headphones when you're playing your games, but I honestly wish that was a feature which they did not put on the uh, Pro Controller. Now, that's really my only negative with this controller. Now, overall, I've had a really good experience with this controller. I actually love this controller a lot. If you didn't know, there's actually people on the internet right now that are claiming that the Switch Pro Controller is the best controller ever made. Honestly, with the amount of time I've already put into this controller, I can say myself, I don't necessarily think it's the best controller ever made for a gaming console. But what I can say is it's a very sturdy controller. If you do own one of these, I can safely say, say that you're not going to be disappointed with this controller at all it is a very solid controller what I will say though is I will say it's better than the Wii U's Pro Controller in my opinion in my opinion I just think the Wii U's Pro Controller is a little bit too uh, plasticky and a little bit too glossy and things like that one thing I never really liked about the Wii U's Pro Controller is that how glossy it was I'm not really a fan of my technology being glossy just because it gets a lot of junk it gets scratched up easily and things like that. But with the Switch's Pro Controller, you can see it's not a glossy, glossy finish. It's a matte finish, so you won't be really seeing fingerprints, gloss, junk, just things on the controller. It's pretty much going to stay nice until you really try to scratch it or until you really try to get junk on it and things like that. Overall, I really do like they did not make it like the Wii U's Pro Controller to where it's glossy. I just never liked the glossy design on my technology, and that goes for controllers or just anything and I'm glad they did not do that now overall it is like I said very nice one thing I can comment to as well which you might notice right here this is just an observation in my opinion I'm not sure if any other controller 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 ever made has this but on the side where the actual uh, buttons are these are some of the biggest buttons I've ever seen on a controller now I may be wrong about this actually but I think these might be the biggest buttons I've ever seen on a controller to date they are some really big buttons and honestly I do like them this big I think they're really really satisfying to click the buttons and you can't make a mistake when you're clicking them because they're just meaty and big and overall they are really nice to actually uh, click you can hear the clicking sound you can see they're really sturdy buttons. One thing you may be asking yourself, how are the triggers on the back? Now, I don't know the names of triggers because I know there's digital and analog, and I can't really tell you which one's which. But what I can tell you is they are the, at, they are the triggers on the very bottom right here. They are the triggers that are going to be the ones that when you press them down, they automatically press all the way. So if you're playing a shooter or a racing game, you cannot choose uh, how much you want to press the trigger they're only a one-way trigger so once you press it you're pressing it fully you can't lightly press it or hardly press it depending on what game you're playing and for racing games and for shooting games that may be a problem unfortunately so they're not the same I have my uh, Xbox one controller here and you can see you can lightly press it down or you can press it down all the way but with the switch controller it's only all the way down every single time I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here so you can only press it, you can only really press it one one way down. You cannot press it, you cannot pick how how far you want to press it down. That may be a little issue in the future when racing games come out and shooting games come out. But overall, I would say this is a very nice controller. Now the final verdict is, should you actually buy the Switch Pro controller? Now it's really going to depend honestly for $70, in my opinion, I absolutely think the controller is worth it. 
Yes, you are paying more than an Xbox One and a PS4 controller, but the fact is, it does have more features. It has Amiibo support, it has HD Rumble, and it also has a gyro support on it. One thing I have heard around the internet, speaking of the uh, HD Rumble, I've heard it's less, it, it's more subtle than it is on the Joy-Cons. So if you're looking to really uh, use HD Rumble or get the full effect of HD Rumble, I heard the Joy-Cons do a much better job. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I can't really comment on that because I haven't used a game that actually utilizes HD Rumble. But in the future, of course, I will get a chance to check out HD Rumble. And then I might talk about my experiences with HD Rumble with the Joy-Cons and the Switch Pro Controller. But right now, I have not experienced it. But back to what I was saying was, I was saying was, this does have a lot of features in it. And the fact that it feels really nice in the hands and it's a very solid controller, I personally think it's worth $70. But the, but the a question you want answered is probably, is it worth $70? Now, that's really going to depend on a person-to-person -person basis. Let me explain here. The reason it's going to uh, vary from a person-to-person -person, uh, basis is because that it depends on how much you truly don't, how much you truly enjoy the Joy-Cons. If you truly enjoy the Joy-Cons and they're not cramping your fingers and you like the small buttons and the 20-hour battery is fine, then I highly recommend not plumping down the money for this controller. Because again, $70 is still $70 on top of you buying the Switch, on top of you buying probably Breath of the Wild and things like that. So it does rack up the money. So honestly, if you can get by not using this controller, then go ahead and not buy the Switch Pro controller. But if the Joy-Cons do bother you and you feel cramped and some of the buttons are too small and things like that, then yes, I honestly, like again said, this is worth easily $70 and most people who use this controller will not be disappointed. One thing I forgot to talk about, which I am going to mention here before I head out of this video, is that I'm going to talk about the D-pad. I do think the D-pad is pretty solid. Just wanted to mention the D-pad because as we know, the Xbox 360 has a garbage uh, D-pad. Overall, I would say this is a very solid D-pad. I can't for surely say it is my favorite D-pad on a controller, but it is a solid D-pad. And for the most part, I am loving this controller outside of that one issue I did mention, which I actually forgot what I just mentioned a while back in the video, but besides that one, oh yeah, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That is really my only complaint with this controller. But overall, it's a very solid controller. If you don't like the Joy-Cons, pick up the a Switch Pro controller. If you're fine with the Joy-Cons, go ahead and use the Joy-Cons because $70 is a lot of money. Like I said again at the beginning of the video, these are very hard to find at the as of the date of this video being recorded. Anyway, guys, peace out. I'll see you guys later in my next video. I'm out, guys.